vivamus, mea lesbiat coemimus. Rumorus quae senum seweriorum, omnes unia saisti memus assis. Soles occideret, redire possunt nobis, cum semel brevis occidit lux. Nox est perpetuuna dormienda. Dami, basia mille, den de centum, den mil altera, den secunda centum, den dos qualtera mille, den de centum. Den, cum milia multa fecarimus, contor babimus illa nesciat, aut ne quis malus invadere possit, cum tantum sciat esse basiorum. Quaeris, quod mihi, basiationis tuae lesbia sensatis superque, quam magnus numerus libis aherenae lassar picciferis jacet cerenis, ora clum iovis inter aestuosi et bati veteris sacrum sepulcrum. Aut, quam sidera multa, Cum tacit nox perti vos hominum vident amores. Tam te basia multa basiare, ue sano satisset super catullest, quae nec per numerare curiosi possint nec mala fascinara lingua. Let us love dear lesbia, and let us live, and let us count the stale old talk of frail old men at one penny. Suns may set and rise, but to us, when once that brief light has died, there remains one night, one perpetual night to be slept. So. Give me a hundred kisses, and then give me a thousand, and then give me another thousand kisses, and then another hundred, and then one more thousand, and then one more hundred. <coughs> and then, when once we have made many millions of kisses, we will distort their number, lest an evil spirit when once he knows just how many kisses we have made, lest this evil spirit be jealous of us. You ask, dear lesbia, how many kisses are enough and more than enough for your Catullus? Well, as many as the grains of sand, as the pebbles, the stones that lie on the beaches along the Côte d'Azur, stretching from the sacred town of Frejus all the way to Cannes, passing by Antibes. Or perhaps as many as the scar stars in the sky when night is silent and watches over the secret loves of little boys and little girls. This is the amount of kisses that could satisfy your insane, your mad, your insatiated Catullus. And this number cannot be counted by the curious, nor can it be cursed by the incurable. Est mens deducta tua mea lesbia culpa, at quita sofficio perdit it ipsa suo, ut iam nec bene welli quiat tibi soptima fias, nec desistera mare omnia si facias. Reason, blinded by sin, lesbia, 
a mind drowned in its own devotion. You may come clothed in your excellence, but I cannot think tenderly of you. Yet, sink to whatever treason you dare, I can never cut this love. Adriano strung the cow's legs together, cocked tight to take milk. He let me try. I waded towards her, a blanket over my shoulders, and I squeezed top teat to bulky bottom. But she wouldn't give, knowing I was new, so Adriano took two udders in the scratchy canvas of his hands and quickly tugged them like church bells. I had never seen a more masculine gesture. Milk gushed, splattering the bucket with cream. I should have dated your dad, Andre, the Russian artist who makes ceramic lobster lampshades under the thick of his stately mustache. Instead of making mediocre love with you in your hammock, I could have been mingling at New York art shows with your dad. I could have been barbecuing with your dad, who once, having discovered I was vegetarian, thoughtfully heated a block of tofu on the grill with a slab of cheese. Your dad, who once, after you and I came back from our sushi dinner, looked up from his painting, a portrait of a nude, gazed at me in my long orange dress and simply demanded, turn. So I spun for him like some entranced Russian nutcracker and you never said a damn thing about my long orange dress. I should have dated your dad and maybe in another life, I do. And we walk home together from the organic supermarket where we buy expensive olive oil. His hand slipped into my back pocket. I take a dip in the pool where your family is sprawled out, your nephew finding victims for his water squirt tool, and I take a green foam noodle innocently peg it between my legs and float as its tip sticks out of the water. Your father sees and wags his finger like a metronome saying, no, 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 at what have must have looked like my own foam penis protruding from the pool's surface. Speechless, I remove the noodle and tread water. Later, your mother says, who the hell has been sitting with a wet bathing suit on my wooden chairs? She glimpses at my damp ass cheeks and stares. In our guest room, two single beds decked in perfect tucked in cotton are strategically apart to defer us from fornication. Your brother, chain smoking on the balcony under an iced lemon galaxy, lectures me about linguistic sciences. He says, okay, every few seconds to check if I've understood, if I get it. His cigarette cinders levitate from the ash tray over the bougainvillea to you floating below in the pool, your chest reflecting the nude Milky Way. Your head rests on the green foam noodle. During dinner, as you dipped flatbread in the pomegranate baba ganoush, you quoted someone who said, everything is mysterious. I tried to think of something not mysterious, but I couldn't. Starlings, sorrow, sleep, the chemical reactions of sex, all the workers 
who lay pipes, build bridges, fix toilets, blue blood, red blood, war, the lady eyes of a donkey, the cashew that grows in the pocket of a cashew fruit, the smell of dirt, knowing you will die, horse hairs on a violin bow. We were the only customers in the restaurant. The waiter insisted on showing us Lebanon on a map, pointing as if his finger could take us there. We could have been nowhere else but here. In Stockholm, a man named Hans picked me up from the train station in his Volkswagen that sailed slowly through the blizzard like a polar bear through an Arctic garden of glaciers. He took me straight to a junkyard. Why are we going to a junkyard, I asked. And he only said, oh, ha, ha. <laughs> and when we pulled in, a man who was buried under his own hunchback changed the car's flat tire. And I waited outside in a cold that makes your lungs throttle from shock. If it weren't for the floodlights, I would have looked towards the Stockholm stars. Instead, I saw rats playing tag across a jungle of junk steel, squeaking, oh, ha, ha. And I left in the morning, earlier than daybreak, and I danced. I danced alone to survive the snow-drowned, comatose bus stop, shaking my arms like an evangelist preacher speaking in tongues to conjure up warmth in the rooms of my body. And when the bus came, the driver said, hey, which is hello in Swedish. Just hey, like I was the friend he'd been waiting for. Olivia, the landlady in Florence, clasps my shoulders with her chubby fingers, smelling of prosciutto, and gets close enough for me to count the hairs on her sweaty mustache. She stares at me and says, if an Italian man asks you out, never say yes. <laughs> say no. And when he asks you out again, which he will, say no. And when he asks you out a third time, say maybe, which means yes, and he knows it. She slinked down the marble staircase out of sight until a decade later when her ghost catches me in a bakery with Luca, the baker from Bologna. She opens her mouth as if to say, never say yes. But all that comes out is a bouquet of parsley, which she chewed for mir miraculous health benefits. She swore on it. Under an Irish rain shower, a mangy dripping dog. Our skin goose bright against the gray mop water of everything. You talk about transcendence and stopping drugs for good. The rain smells of rye bread. Women with babies walk into a hair salon called Curl Up and Die.
singing sea dogs to sea eyes her eyes breaking shores of mist rhythm glances over wide gulfs and waiting for the ocean to breathe new light new life in our lives in our lives shining bright behind naked bodies alive swimming midnight in secret let wet free livid with high tide rising of black surface velvet our sea our sinking under salt water kiss i miss her eyes mirror eye images of mine of tide pools of time swirling with teal tears here freshwater rivers of streams of time slipping by side by side but never touching but brushing by colliding binding blinding into corresponding shapes of chance and one and one last drop one last drop of living in her eyes in our lives in the endless living instance of life astride on distant coasts and giant stone grains of god sand with white foam and amber amber algae found found in our saline skin tinted with sun and love and life and time reflecting in her eyes in her eyes in the slow summer days spent gazing outstretched across long bays watching watching her eyes and realize and realize the bright white warmth that transform auburn horizons into time into time in turn time transforms orange oblong into gold into deep red discs submerged in the west ocean waves washing ashore one after another after another two together in symmetrical 
in our lives, in our lives, telling lies, telling fish tales and fantasies more real than here, more real than him and her and them, and caught happy, caught floating, caught flying past friends and feast and bonfire bridges and benches, dropping clothes on shores to live one last time, to live one last time more unmatching eyes until until in her eyes in his cries at night not alone but not alive not living not pining for another life in our lives in our times in our time not together but not apart in her eyes, just across the slender skyline, the thin red line of sunset to the west, to the sunset of the west until, until in our lives, in our blind eyes, in our blind lives, crashing on shores, on floors, against rocks and stones, and bleeding, and sinking in the ocean, and sinking to the salt wind breeze of ravines and deep sonar signals until, until, until in our good eyes, until in our goodbyes, said never left leaving, said left living, only seeing, only seeming, only seeming, only the time, only the time left in the eyes, in her eyes, in her eyes, in the only time left in our lives, fleeting until, until, until in her eyes, in her eyes, in our lives, like two living waves across time, in her eyes, in our lives, return to shore together, in our lives, in her eyes, eternal return, eternal return. Eternal return, just in time and inside, and inside and in her eyes, and in her eyes, and in our lives, and in the synchronicity of waves.